Hey everyone, I'm Josh, I'm a Solutions Architect with Threatscape's Global World 1 in Microsoft Security Practice. Today we'll be looking at some tips around Defender Suite. In particular, we'll be looking at malware detection available in Defender for Cloud Apps. More and more organisations use cloud storage services, and with that, those can be accessed from anywhere. So when a user is compromised, they can upload malicious content, and try and distribute it within and out with your organisation. And as it's coming from your organisation services, those can be trusted from whoever receives it. Defend for Cloud Apps allows us to scan and detect malware on those cloud platforms, create alerts based on those threats, also let us take action against the files that are detected. So that's all cleared up, let's get into a demo. In order to make use of the malware detection, we must enable the settings and the policies. So we start in the Defender for Cloud Apps portal by going to portal.cloudappsecurity. We then go to the cog at the top right and click settings. We then go to the information protection section, click on files and ensure enable file monitoring is ticked. We then go to control and then policies and we select the filter by type. Select malware detection policy. And as you can see, this policy is enabled, but by default it is disabled. In order to enable it, click on the three dots and select enable. In this policy, I've also edited it a little bit. I've enabled file sandboxing and of course I'm creating an alert for each triggered event and also sending alerts by email. Jumping into the investigate section, we can actually see which apps we've connected to Defender for Cloud Apps. We can see we've connected Office 365 and Dropbox. So this policy will apply to both of those cloud apps and any malware detected will be alerted on. Now that we've configured malware detection, we can now go ahead and look at some of the alerts that it's generated. So start in the Defender for Cloud Apps portal, we can then go to the alert section. And as you can see, we have a few malware detection alerts. So we'll click on the first one here, and we can get some more context around this alert. So we can see the policy triggered for this alert. We can see the app that this, uh, of course, alert was generated for, the entity, the identity of the user and the entity of the file. You can see a brief description and some additional context around these files here so you can see that the path of where that file came from. So you can see it was an Adele, Vance, Documents, PowerSploit, of course the rest of it there as well. And then you can see the URL where that file is. Under File Policy Report we can see some more information. You can see the file name, you can see the malware family. And of course, we can see a little icon that says that it's infected. We also see the confidence level of this detection from the threat intelligence detection type. If we go down a little bit further, we can see other activities related to the matched file. So we can actually see when the file was uploaded, when it was detected, and then of course a scan on demand there as well. We do have some actions here as well. So um, for the file itself, we can put it into the trash, we can view some more information. And then for Adele, we have some other actions here under Office 365, we can mark the users compromised because they've uploaded a bunch of uh, malicious pieces of software into OneDrive. We can require the user to sign back in again, suspend or view the account settings and app. There's some other information here as well. Once we've done some resolutions, once we've investigated this and dealt with the, the incident itself, we can then close the alert off by selecting one of these items here. If you want to look at all the files all at once instead of each individual alert, as you can see here, there's quite a few. Uh, we can actually go ahead and go to the policy itself. So we go to the policy section under control, select the type so we can filter by malware detection. And as you can see, we have 48 count for the matches. And click on that, you can see all the files that have been matched under this policy. You can then select multiple files. And then we can do bulk actions. So we can authorize these files to say that they're okay. You can put them into the trash, put them into user quarantine, and put them into admin quarantine, and refresh the files. What we'll do is we'll remove one of these files here. We'll do the second one here and put this into the trash. And for the third one here, 
we'll put this into the user quarantine. And we'll come back in a couple of moments once that's finished. So after a few minutes, our actions have now been complete. So we'll just jump into Adele's OneDrive quarantine folder. So this quarantine folder is just in the user's OneDrive and it's named quarantine. And as you can see, two minutes ago, see the file has been quarantined. You can see it's invoke ninja copy, which was the file we targeted. Jump into the user's recycle bin. You can also see that the Mimi Love EXE has been put into the recycle bin as well. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos and subscribe if you find this useful.